Hey, welcome to this quick Blender tutorial video. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at how we can use Blender's Grease Pencil tool to create a very simple 2D animation. So this is gonna be a quick tutorial where we kind of just go over the very basics you need to know to actually start setting some keyframes and creating very basic 2D animation. So I already have Blender open up, so let's go ahead and jump into a brand new blank scene. So inside of Blender here, we've got this default scene open up. And what we're actually gonna do is go over here to File, Let's go to new and we're going to hit the 2D animation. So this is going to open up sort of a new layout for us dedicated to actually creating 2D animation inside of Blender. And you might notice kind of right off the bat, we have this completely white canvas and it looks like we're just looking at kind of what you would see in more of a 2D drawing application. But if we actually were to try to pan around and rotate in this view, you'd see immediately we're still actually in this 3D viewport. What Blender has done is basically created a completely white background for us. And then we already have this camera in here at a front angle. So if we actually jump into our camera, we have more of a just a straight on sort of orthographic type of setup. Now I'll probably do another tutorial video going into more in depth on the Grease Pencil tool, all the different brushes and really all the different settings you have available inside of Grease Pencil. But this video, I just wanna keep it on the absolute basics of how you can actually begin to set keyframes and create a very basic animation. Now, one important thing that we wanna take note of is this Grease Pencil tab down here at the bottom of our viewport. And we can actually change this if we go ahead and open up the editor tab. We're actually technically in this dope sheet editor, but we have it changed to the grease pencil. So this is going to act very similar as Blender's dope sheet or even very similar to Blender's timeline. You can see we have the timeline over here on the right side of this. We can see we have some of the properties associated with our current grease pencil. So when you actually create a new 2D animation layout, Blender already adds things like the stroke in here for us. And you can see we even have a couple layers for lines and fills. If you didn't create this 2D animation layout, these are things you would have to actually add in there yourself. But again, I'll probably do another video going a bit more in depth into some of the grease pencil tools here. But what I wanna take a look at here is this line and fill layer here in our grease pencil. If we actually go over here to the right of our properties panel, you can see we have this object data properties, which is actually the stroke data here. You can see we have our two layers for lines and fills. These are going to be added in here automatically anytime you create a new 2D animation scene inside of Blender. What I'm actually gonna do for this is I'm actually going to delete these two layers. Now you can see when I do that immediately, if I go over here to the grease pencil, you can see those layers are no longer there. We actually don't have that white tick mark indicating keyframes in the actual grease pencil timeline here. And then now what I wanna do is go over here to the layers and I'm just gonna hit new layer. That's gonna add a new layer and it's gonna automatically name it GP for grease pencil underscore layer. We can go ahead and double click that. And I'm actually gonna name this ball bounce because that's actually what we're gonna be creating here within our animation. And then I actually wanna create another layer by just hitting the plus icon. And I'm gonna name this layer floor. And I'm just gonna quickly draw in just a straight on floor plane. If I go ahead and select under the strokes here, I wanna make sure that I highlight that floor layer. And I'm gonna come in here and actually grab this line tool and just draw a straight line across. And I can hold shift to make sure that's perfectly straight. And you can see it's a little bit hard to see because we've got this sort of light gray color. Let me actually undo that a few times. And I'm actually gonna go up here to strength and bring that all the way to a value of one. And then I'll go ahead and draw this straight line across. And this is basically gonna act as the floor plane within this animation. All right, that looks good. And let's go ahead and highlight the ball bounce layer. I'm gonna go up here to the draw tool, make sure I have that activated. And I'm just gonna real quickly straight ahead, just start animating a simple ball bounce. And you'll see right off the bat, I am not a great 2D artist, so I'm gonna kind of struggle through this, but let's start by just drawing kind of a spherical shape up here. I'm gonna jump forward one frame and I do wanna note that I have the auto key turned on. So now if I draw another stroke, you can see it's automatically going to set that keyframe for us. And actually right off the bat, I don't really like the placement where I've put that sphere. I wanna think about ease in and ease out. If this were the top of the arc of the ball bounce, the spacing would actually be quite a bit closer to that first drawing we made, something like that. And you can see we're doing this on our ball bounce layer. We have the floor plane on its own layer. So that will just always be there. 
All right, so I'm gonna jump forward another frame and you can see already the size and the shape of these drawings are not very great, but I'm gonna kind of just straight ahead through this and hopefully get something that looks kind of halfway decent. We'll see here. Thinking about spacing through a ball bounce like this, obviously as it gets closer and closer to the ground, we're gonna get spacing that's further and further apart, something like that. And then maybe here we've got like this stretch. And again, I'm not a great 2D artist, but this is but this is just really a quick look at how you can start creating actual animation with Blender's Grease Pencil. And Grease Pencil is a really powerful tool inside of Blender. And it gives you a lot of really powerful tools in here. And I can just frame by frame this and kind of see the ball bounce we're creating. Now you'll notice that automatically we have some onion skin going on. Basically we can see the drawing before and the drawing after. If we want to, we can actually change some of these settings in our properties panel. You can see over here on onion skinning, we can change the opacity. We can change how many keyframes before and how many keyframes after are being displayed. You can see it's one before and one after. This setting usually works perfect, so I'll just go ahead and keep everything kind of at the default there. But we've got this sort of squash here. Next frame, I'll start to kind of stretch it out. Something like this. Just let me do something a little bit closer there. Here. Here. And you can see again, I'm just sort of going straight ahead here. And even though I'm a really bad 2D artist, Grease Pencil is a lot of fun to just mess around with. And if you are learning animation, I feel like one of the best ways to really understand spacing is to do a 2D animation like this. Because when you're actually drawing in here, you're actually choosing where each individual drawing is going. And you're actually going in here and really deciding sort of the spacing of this ball bounce. If you were to do this in 3D, typically you would use something like the graph editor to really tweak your spacing. And as someone who's just learning animation, that can be a little bit harder to grasp spacing if you're tweaking you know, the curves on a channel rather than actually going in here and kind of individually placing each drawing in order to achieve the spacing that you want. So we've got this pose right up here and this, you can see our spacing is going to get closer and closer together as it starts to hit the top of this arc. So we've got the drawing on frame 18. I'll do another drawing. I'll do another drawing right around here and then right around here. And then basically it's going to be traveling up, but that spacing is going to get, you know, closer and closer together here. So we get something like this. So now if we play this, you can see the very rough ball bounce animation that we've created here inside of Grease Pencil. And I like utilizing this 2D animation layout because Blender kind of gives you everything that you need to in order to actually start creating some 2D animation. We have our Grease Pencil timeline down here at the bottom. We have our auto key option that we can turn off or turn on. And we also, if we go ahead and take a look at the materials, Blender already adds in things like a solid stroke material, a square stroke material, some solid fills, as well as a dot stroke. So we have a few different options for materials for our actual drawing here. If we come over here to our drawing tools, we can change it from a pen, from a pencil, which is what we were drawing with, to something like a pen or a marker. And you can also adjust your radius and that kind of thing. But I really just wanted to do a quick tutorial on just the very basics you need to know in order to actually start creating some 2D animation with Blender's Grease Pencil. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about real quick is this really awesome tool that Blender has inside of Grease Pencil. So if you're like me and you're not a great 2D artist, then drawing simple spheres that are roughly the same shape for each individual drawing can be a little bit difficult. So what we can actually do here is I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go back to frame zero and I'm just gonna delete all of these keyframes here except for the floor press X and delete keyframes. And you can see that immediately when I do that, because I deleted all of those keyframes, it also deleted that ball bounce layer. But we still actually have our ball bounce layer. If I go over here to my stroke properties, you can see we still have that here visible. But since we deleted all the keyframes associated with that in our grease pencil timeline, it's been removed here. But if we were to do a new drawing at any point, we would actually see that layer added here. And what I'm gonna do for this is actually go over here to pencil and I'm gonna choose a pen just so we get a nice solid color here. And what I'm gonna do on frame one is I'm gonna go up here to where the ball bounce is going to start and I'm gonna just draw a sphere. And then let's jump to 
Let's go to frame 10 and I'm going to do another drawing, but this time with the ball on the floor. So something like that. So we have our two drawings here and what we can actually do is go over here to this interpolate tool and I'm going to jump to frame two. I'm going to select this interpolate tool and then just click and drag in the viewport. And you can see what this is going to do is basically morph these two drawings. So it's going, so the closer I get to the bottom drawing, it's going to kind of morph into that drawing. You can see I can go past that a little bit and then go past that up here. But you can see by doing this, we can very quickly go in here and really fine tune our spacing. And we don't actually have to draw each individual ball for every frame. So I can go to frame three now with that tool still activated. I'm just going to click and drag in the viewport. And then you can see I can really manage my spacing through a lot of this. And you can see by using that interpolate tool, it's quite a bit faster because you're not having to actually draw each individual frame there. And then what I can do is go up to frame 20 and let's do a drawing at the top of the arc. So I'll go ahead and make sure I have my draw tool activated. I'm going to draw another ball up here at the top. About like that. All right, let's jump to frame 11 now. And basically, I'm just going to blend between the drawing on frame 10 and the drawing on frame 20. So I'll click this interpolate. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that you'll notice that when I scrub between these two drawings, my drawing is getting flipped. And that's because Blender has taken into account how I actually started the stroke and what direction I went in. So with this first drawing, I believe I went counterclockwise when I first started to draw that stroke. And then the drawing on frame 20, I went clockwise. So that's giving me this weird kind of morph that's happening. So if you are using this interpolate tool, that's one thing that you wanna make sure that you do is that how you actually start your stroke is consistent between each of your drawings that you're blending to. So let me go ahead and undo that. I'm gonna undo the drawing on frame 20, and then I'm just gonna redraw that. But I wanna make sure that I go counterclockwise with it. So something like that. And then I'll hit this interpolate tool. And then now when I click and drag, you can see I'm able to sort of blend between these two drawings. And I'll just real quickly blend between these drawings, just something like that. And you can see we're able to make this ball bounce a little bit faster for this. And if you really don't even want to have to mess with drawing circles for your ball, we could always use some of the other tools that we have in Grease Pencil, like this ellipse tool, where we can actually draw these perfect circles for our ball bounce. So you do have those options. So I think that's it for this tutorial. I'll probably do a more in-depth Grease Pencil tutorial, but this was really just to show you how to get up and running and really the only things that you need to know in order to actually start creating some basic 2D animation. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you found it helpful and be sure to check back on the channel for more videos.